940 here at Big 550 KTRS. Our next guest is going to be at Left Bank Books downtown on Monday for a signing and a reading of his new book called Mission at Nuremberg. Our guest is Tim Townsend, former reporter for the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, religion reporter uh, for stltoday.com, has written a new book. Tim, welcome to Big 550 KTRS. Thanks, McGraw. Good to talk to you. The book is called Mission at Nuremberg, an American Army Chaplain and the Trial of the Nazis. I cannot wait to devour this book. Congratulations uh, on an unbelievable story. Uh, give us a quick synopsis of what you wrote about. So, yeah, thank you. It's, it was a, a story I found while reporting for the Post-Dispatch. It's, uh, it's about a St. Louis um, pastor, minister, a uh, Lutheran minister who had grown up uh, in on a farm in Cape Girardeau and became a, a minister uh, in St. Louis uh, in the 1920s, 1930s. He worked as a missionary in the Depression in the St. Louis City Jails and hospitals. And he was 50 in 1943. Uh, war had been going on for about a year and a half, and he decided he wanted to do his part. As a 50-year-old, as a volunteered to be a chaplain. Uh, and the war, and that's what he did. He was a hospital chaplain in outside of London, ministering to wounded uh, GIs coming, uh, you know, c coming back from the front lines. And uh, after the war, his hospital unit moved down through um, France into Germany, wound up in Munich. Uh, and the the people who were organizing the Nuremberg trials at the time heard about him, knew that he had a certain very specific skill set. He was uh, he spoke German because of his time in Cape Girardeau on the farm. He uh, was Lutheran, which is what most of the Nazis were, uh, and he uh, had worked in the St. Louis city jails. And so he was assigned to be the chaplain uh, for the 21 major Nazi war criminals during the Nuremberg trials. So he sat there and consoled them and was their spiritual guider while they sat trial for crimes against humanity. Right. So he and uh, a Catholic chaplain named Sixtus O'Connor from New York uh, who ministered to the Catholics. There was a handful of Catholic uh, prisoners, too. Yeah, they were, they were the, the pastors. They were in the cells with Hermann Goring and Albert Speer and Ernst Kaltenbrunner and Hans Frank, all of the people who uh, essentially were the architects of the Holocaust. Now, how did you find this story? I was doing a story for the for the Post Dispatch in 2007 about chaplains uh, who were coming home from Iraq and Afghanistan, and a, and a program that the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod ha, uh, had just started, and that they, they still have, called Operation Barnabas, that helps uh, chaplains reintegrate back into their congregations after having been deployed, and. Um, you know, just gives them a softer landing, sure. uh, helps the congregations themselves understand what these, these pastors had gone through. And uh, I was looking for color for the story, so I went up to Concordia Seminary in Clayton, and uh, uh, they happened to have an exhibit at the time at the Concordia Historical Institute about the entire history of, of the American war chaplaincy. And under one of the pieces of glass in the exhibit was a letter uh, written by all 21 of the Nazi war criminals uh, to Alma Gericke, who was uh, this chaplain's wife. It was about halfway through the trial. Uh, she lived on Halliday Avenue in South St. Louis. And they had, they had heard a rumor that, that she was calling her husband home, that she'd had enough, the war was over, uh, please come home. And they were, they were asking her to allow him to stay through the end of the trial. Um, it's extraordinary. The book is called Mission at Nuremberg, an American Army Chaplain and the Trial of the Nazis. We should say that Nuremberg was the birth of the Nazi Party, and that's where they decided to have the trial after the war. Um, th this wasn't, uh, these were the highest ranking people they could find. Who, who was on trial at Nuremberg? Yeah, these were the these were the uh, exactly the highest people that they could find and who weren't dead already. Um, as a, a, a Herman Goring was was the sort of star um, prisoner. He was Hitler's number two. Uh, he was the uh, leader of the Luftwaffe. He was the uh, person who signed the uh, 
declaration to um you know for the final solution right so he was he was sort of the big the big fish there and then there but there were all kinds of other uh nazis who uh went from you know uh, goebbels was dead and so they they had his radio propaganda chief hans fritsche uh sort of in his stead he was eventually acquitted um but as i mentioned albert speer um uh, hans frank who was the called the butcher of krakow uh balder von schirak who was the youth uh, hitler youth leader um and uh, most interestingly i think uh, ernst kaltenbrunner who was in charge of and oversaw the entire concentration camp system um he was a Catholic, at least nominally, and uh, he was ministered to by the by the Sixtus O'Connor, the priest who was uh, Garricky's assistant, um, who had just months earlier, before he got to Nuremberg, been part of a unit uh, that had liberated Matthausen concentration camp, and so he spent part of uh, April and May burying thousands of bodies, um, and then months later he was ministering to the man who had been in charge of that in charge of that that camp and all the others. When did this Lutheran minister die? He died in 1968 um, in Chester, Illinois, and, and which and, is where he went after the war and uh, continued while he was there. He was the the um, uh, uh, chaplain there uh, at Menard Correctional Center at the maximum security prison. Uh, in Chester, Illinois, and he was also the assistant pastor of a of a church called St. John's there. And I'm actually going to be uh, going down to the Chester Public Library on Saturday morning um, to to do a a, a reading. And uh, uh, Chaplain Garricky's son, who's 93, still lives in Cape Girardeau, Hank, Colonel Hank Garricky, he's going to be there too. Uh, the book is called Mission at Nuremberg. Tim, you're going to be at Left Bank Books on Monday if you can't get there. Bookstores everywhere, Amazon.com. Uh, it's gonna, it's an unbelievable read. An American Army Chaplain and the Trial of, of the Nazis, Mission at Nuremberg. Uh, Tim, how hard was it for you to do a book about a man who died in 1969? How much of a legacy and how much of his papers were left and how much were you able to, to get to see them? Yeah, there there wasn't a lot. There there were no letters back to his wife. I, I did have Hank, uh, and I went, you know, traveled down from St. Louis to Cape uh, pretty regularly to sit at his kitchen table and have him tell me stories about his dad and his mom uh, and his upbringing in St. Louis. Um, but I did a lot of research uh, in the in uh, the National Archives in Washington. Um, I went to Nuremberg a couple times. I did a lot of reporting uh, to try to put the put the story together um, and uh, you know I hope it I hope it worked out uh, what 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 an extraordinary man to be able to to truly walk the walk right I mean these were the this was the devil on earth and yet they still deserved to be uh, ministered to well, that's what he believed. That's what both these chaplains believed. They were Christians, obviously, and they believed that all people, no matter what they do in life, were forgiven uh, by Christ's death on the cross. But, you know, that's a fairly controversial uh, position when you're faced with uh, the architects of the Holocaust. And so um, that's part of the tension in the book is why did we do this as, a as allies? Why did we provide these men with spiritual comfort when they clearly had no intention of doing that for the six million Jews that they had just murdered. Um, and, and what went through these two chaplains' minds when they, when they, wanted, when they decided that they were going to take this, this assignment? Um, and how did they relate to these men who, you know, after all, were, were Hitler's lieutenants? And they were army chaplains. You know, they were just uh, two guys from... Uh, uh, the states who happen to be in the in the right place at the right time, if you consider it from their point of view. Right, uh, extraordinary work, Tim Townsend. Uh, Mission at Nuremberg: An American Army Chaplain and the Trial of the Nazis. Uh, William Morrow, the the publisher, has uh, Hollywood come come calling because this is a great movie waiting to happen. I think I think actually there have been a couple uh, of, of that sort of call. I haven't really been party to them, but. Yeah, it's it's been really exciting. To, it's been a, it was a six-year effort on uh, you know while I was while I was at the paper. So 
uh, it's nice to have it out there and to have people reading it and, and talking about it. Tim Townsend, this will be one that we'll be talking about for many years to come. Tim, you're always welcome here. Anything you do, uh, make sure you make a stop here because we'd love to chat with you. The book is Thanks called, McGraw. you got it, Mission at Nuremberg, uh, Left Bank Books, Monday night, downtown for book signing and a book reading, bookstores everywhere. Tim, good luck with the book. Thanks. Thanks for having me, McGraw. You got it. Mission at Nuremberg. Uh, that's what I call a story.